Good morning, everybody. Alfred Einstein here, Pockets of Specialized Knowledge, POFSK.com. Thank you for attending. Today, we're going to talk about foreclosure litigation. We're going to talk about all the documents that appear uh, in a file. So the first thing we're going to cover in part one is the LP. There you see the items that are listed within an LP. And we're going to start off by discussing them, most of them, individually. So here we go. A list pendants is a document recorded in the official public records of the county where the property, the subject property, is situated. So what that means is don't record an LP on a property that is situated in Orange County. Don't record it in Seminole. <laughs> it's not going to do anything. The good thing about LPs is they're recorded by the attorneys and they know the law. So there's going to be a very rare circumstance that you're going to have to record an LP, but if you do, please record it in the county where the property is situated. The recording information appears usually somewhere at the top of the document, depending upon the county. Some counties, it appears off to the side like a little sticker, but most of the counties, they're recorded on the very top. And the exa an example of, of recording information might be uh, book and page, and it'll say book one, two, three, four, page five, six, seven, eight, or it'll just say a document number. Uh, using a document number is the way that it's currently going. So I'm going to suggest that you look for a document number at the top of the document or a little sticker off to the side that has all the same information. Court jurisdiction. The first item listed down the left-hand side of the document will be the jurisdictional box. This box contains the number of the judicial circuit in Orange County. It's the Ninth Circuit. And the county, in our example LP, and I, I'll attach one inside the description of, of this uh, video. For example, LP, the box identifies the Ninth Circuit of Orange County. So it is going to give us our, that's our jurisdiction. The parties, continuing down the left side of the document, we see the name of the party, the plaintiff. The plaintiff is the party that filed the lawsuit. And those are the, that's the party that's complaining. They're the ones that are complaining about something. And in our example, the plaintiff is Serve Bank, SB. Just below the plaintiff is the name of the defendant. The defendant is the party defending the lawsuit. They're the ones that's defending, trying to keep the plaintiff from succeeding. And in our example, the defendant is Travis M. Glinton. The case number. The case number usually appears in the upper half of the LP, and it'll say case number right there. Um, it can begin with either letters or numbers, a combination of letters and let numbers are usually specific to each county. Most often, the case number will include the year the case was first filed, the jurisdictional code for either circuit or county court, as well as a divisional code or sometimes a judge's division. When you're looking at the, at the uh, LP, the case number doesn't always appear. Sometimes the case number is not issued until after the LP is recorded. Uh, at that time, then you'll have to research the defendant's last name if you want to pull up the docket sheet to work a pre-foreclosure event or a short sale or something like that. And our example case number is 2024. CA means circuit court. CO means county court. SC means small claims court. And there's the case number. And in, in Orange County, you have to add that capital O at the end or you're not going to pull up nothing. And you'll figure it out. But the case number, just like that, if you're doing research in Orange County. Okay, the case style. The case style is a combination of the names of the party and the case number. For example, if you need to contact the clerk of the court in Orange County and then they and you said, listen, I need some help with this case, they're going to ask you the style of the case. And you would answer Serve Bank versus Glitton, case number 2024CA001955. That's the style of the case. So it's the plaintiff's name, the defendant's name, and the case number. Okay, what's in the body of the LP? Why are we really doing this? Well, within the body of the LP lies the true meaning and intent of the public recording. The notice inside the body of the LP reads in part, you are hereby notified that a lawsuit was instituted by the above named plaintiff against the above named defendant on April 11, 2024, whatever the date is. And the reason for this recording is to let everybody know, because believe it or not, everybody is... Uh, all the people, entire population, is held to know the documents within the public records. That's kind of a reach, but anyways, they have, 
the plaintiff will file the LP to put everybody on notice. They're going to put all lenders post and pre. You know, if you're looking for a new mortgage and they're going to look for an LP to make sure to, to know what's going on. So this notice is very important and it tells the world that there's litigation pending on this property. The LP also includes a legal description. The court doesn't require a property address to be included within the body of the LP, although sometimes the plaintiff's attorney includes them. And that always helps me because when I'm looking up LPs, I want the case number so I can obtain the docket sheet and I want the property address so I can do my value on the property to see what my next course of business is going to be. The court does, however, require the legal description to be included within the LP because that's how everything is kept track of uh, with all the title companies and, you know, with ATIDs and all that stuff. They all only use a legal description of the property. All the information for their plaintiff's attorneys at the bottom of, the, of most of the pleadings at the signature block will be their email address. It'll be their, uh, their phone number, direct line sometimes. And if you don't find the direct email address for the lawyer and you have a reason to reach him, you can look it up in the Florida, Florida bar search. Look up the attorney's name and there'll be his direct email, his or her, if you need to get it. Okay, our next lesson is going to be whenever you click on it. And we're going to do understanding foreclosure litigation. Part two, the clerk's docket sheet. That's an important document that you're going to go fishing for and you need that case number to find it. So I'm glad you finished this one and I'll see you on the next one. Again, this is Alfred Einstein, Pockets of Specialized Knowledge. Please subscribe. I'm creeping my way to 150 subscribers and it would be great if you got me there. Anyways, thanks a lot. Have a great day and remember, you don't know what you don't know.